All right, let's take a look here at management layers. There's a lot of management layers for Kubernetes, and some of these might kind of be their own distributions with a platform on top of them. Uh, so it's really hard to kind of um, put them in a box, but I try to group them separate from distributions as best I could that were pure distributions. So uh, management layers are for running Kubernetes on other platforms or allows you to extend your control plane to multiple platforms. And when I say other platforms, I mean like, um, you know, like AWS has EKS and that is their Kubernetes as a service offering. But I'm saying like, there is no as a service, you're just like setting it up on maybe their virtual machines or things like that. So let's go walk through them. The first is Weave Kubernetes Platform. WKP. Now, if you go to the website right now, you can't find this exactly. It's kind of weird. They might have rebranded this as like Weave uh, Core or something like that. But um, um, I just stuck with this name because I preferred it. So all of Weave's open sources tools packaged as a platform so you can build out a GitOps enabled cluster. And so what it looked like to me was that they had a lot of CI CD stuff. And um, the idea is like, you could set up a cluster relatively easy uh, most places and have good governance over them, good way of being very uh, agile and just start to get to work. So that was kind of interesting. Then there is Rafe. No idea if that's the correct pronunciation, but uh, similar to OpenShift, and we'll talk about OpenShift in a moment, but with a larger focus on governance and GitOps-based uh, management for any Kubernetes clusters running on anything, including OpenShift. So when you go to the Rayfe website, uh, they'll have this picture of like showing that they can manage anything from anywhere. And so the idea is if you buy into their system, um, you know, you just need to learn one interface as opposed to a bunch of them. And so that could be very attractive. Then there's VMware Tanzu. So wherever vSphere runs, you can manage you uh, you can manage uh, and deploy and monitor Kubernetes cluster. Um, my knowledge of VMware is not that strong. Uh, like I kind of know what v <laughs> vSphere is. Like it's a thing that you install on your virtual machines, and it has to do with virtualization. So uh, think of it like um, you go on AWS, and I would assume that you install this on bare metal. Probably that's what you do. So imagine you have like bare metal like machines that don't have virtualization installed on it. So you install vSphere, you press a button that sets up vSphere and you install your license. But anywhere there's vSphere is anywhere you could install Kubernetes cluster. Um, and then you could manage it from Tanzu. So like it makes it, it's like a management layer uh, anywhere. So kind of similar to Rayfe, but Rayfe is actually prop, uh, leveraging um, the actual as a service um, offerings. So like it'll actually leverage EKS. It's not like, uh, it's a VM, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's a custom install. So there's kind of a difference there. Then you have these things that are um, multi-cluster management. So first is Azure Arc. And so this allows you to govern compute such as Kubernetes, like, and also virtual machines or SQL servers across a, more than a single cloud service provider on premise or on the edge. So it's not Kubernetes specific, but it is very often used for Kubernetes. And the idea is we are uh, extending our control plane. So we have one interface uh, to govern uh, compute other places, right? Um, and uh, that's really useful, I feel like, from a compliance standpoint. So, like, let's say you want to run stuff on a uh, AWS or somewhere else, um, but, uh, you know, like, it just becomes a lot more complicated if, if uh, you know, from a governance standpoint. So it's really nice to have a single tool uh, for that, okay? We have Google Anthos. So this is also multi-cluster management. This one in specific is just Kubernetes. And I, as far as I understand, it's GKE, so Google Kubernetes uh, en um, engine, but it's extending the, uh, the cluster to be uh, managed on other uh, cloud service providers. So like, I believe AWS, I don't think they have Azure for some reason or on-premise, but basically um, it takes over VMs as far as I understand and then installs uh, whatever it installs on that. And then allows you to manage everything from Anthos. Um, and so, you know, from a Kubernetes perspective, I think it has an edge over Azure Arc, um, but it doesn't talk about like governance and stuff like that. So maybe from like a security or, or like compliance standpoint, Azure Arc might be better, but not as nice to use. Then you have Platform 9. So this is similar to Rayfe, but uh, relies more on third-party tooling, whatever that means. But as far as I understand, it doesn't leverage native functionality from cloud service providers. So it's not using GKE or it's not using EKS. Uh, it is using some other thing that might be installed in virtual machines to kind of like uh, simulate maybe what Google Anthos is doing, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, there's the idea there. 
So this is this stuff. And then there's two that I kind of want to give a, a little bit more attention to because they're bigger deals like Rancher and OpenShift. So Red Hat has OpenShift and it's a platform as a service for Kubernetes. And so K OpenShift is just Kubernetes. Like it's not, it's a distribution, but the idea is that it is just a commercial platform with Kubernetes installed on it. And then they've extended like uh, a platform around it to make it really easy to use. Um, and what's interesting, like when I saw an IBM Cloud, you could actually launch OpenShift in IBM Cloud and you can probably do it in other cloud service providers. Um, so the idea here is that they, uh, they extend kubectl. So they have their own called OC, which stands for open shift. I think it'd be OS, but it's OC CLI. And so it has some additional functionality that makes conveniences easier, like RBAC, which is kind of a pain to set up. And they make that a lot easier and things like that. You can quickly deploy local code to a remote OpenShift cluster via Odo. So that's another uh, uh, CLI tool they have that makes things easier. Um, they have a quality assurance pipeline built into the platform, so that saves you some time there. Fixing critical bugs earlier instead of waiting for our next Kubernetes release. That Red Hat is known for uh, being very, 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 very good in the enterprise for um, rolling out bugs fixes very quickly, right? Because they're used to managing their Red Hat distribution. Um, and so, you know, that's really the reason people pay for it is just to make sure that everything's patched and good. Uh, their platform utilizes Red Hat Core OS. Um, and this is an operate, operating system optimized for running containers. So uh, that's kind of interesting. Operators Hub is an automated installation tool for one-click marketplace. Other providers like GKE is a one-click marketplace. So I'm assuming that's even more integrated because it, it's so opinionated about even like the operating system that it must be really easy uh, to set up. Um, it has a graphical UI for developer consoles. So that's really nice. Code-ready workspace. This was really interesting. So like developer environments, uh, and we use one in the course, Cloud9, and we look at uh, Google's for a bit. But um, this one is specific for Kubernetes, right? The only thing is, like, I didn't use it because um, Red Hat is such a pain to sign up for. Like, I tried signing up for OpenShift, and it couldn't take my Canadian postal code, and it broke, and I waited, like, a week for them to fix it. And they were asking for so much information. It was I was not happy about it. But, like, they do have, like, a 30-day trial, but I don't know. I thought it was better to use Cloud9 in that case. But it's just very impressive to see that there's a cloud developer environment for Kubernetes because like I, you can't do it on Gitpod. And uh, on AWS, we do it because we're running a virtual machine. But I mean, this one's more optimized for it. We have Rancher Kubernetes Engine, RKE. And uh, I don't know why the logo's not there. It probably shows up at the end here. But it runs entirely within Docker containers. Um, Rancher is the one that bi uh, built K3S. I don't think it's K3S in particular. It's their own. Dis it's another distribution because I would imagine you'd want the full power of Kubernetes. It works on bare metal and virtualized servers. RKE solves the problem of installation complexity, a common issue in the Kubernetes community. Installation and operation of Kubernetes is both simplified, easily automated. It's entirely independent of the operating system and platform you're running. As long as you can run a supported version of Docker, you can deploy and run Kubernetes with RKE. So as far as I understand, you can bring RKE anywhere you want. So it's like, oh, you want to run on AWS? Great. Make sure you have something like a VM that runs Docker, right? Go to Google, checkbox Docker, and uh, use that thing. And so that gives you a bit more ability there. But, you know, these are the two big ones, I would say. Um, and that's why I gave them a lot more detail. But there you go.